Hello and welcome to the Playmaker Best Practices tutorial. This video is an adaptation of the Playmaker manual entry of the same name, which itself is an adaptation of a post made by OG Playmaker rock star Jean Fabre. In this video, you'll be learning how to best work with Playmaker and Unity. Variables. Don't overuse global variables for everything and anything. They're very tempting to use because you can access them from anywhere, even prefabs and templates, and you can access them immediately without having to get them like if you were using GetFSM actions. Just boom, right there in your little drop down menu. However, the reason this can be dangerous is because there is no breadcrumb trail. There are no checks and balances with globals. They become harder and harder to track back, like where did this value get set from? Why is this value changed? Which system changed this value? If you had 10 FSMs, which all had a set game object action, and they were all setting the same global variable, good luck finding out which one was responsible. What do you do instead? And when are good times to use global variables? For example, having all those 10 FSMs with the set game object action, you could instead have those FSMs send an event to some manager FSM that handled the actual setting of the game object variable, kind of like this. This way, the manager could keep track of where that value came from using this get sent by value. Generally, you could count on one hand how many global variables should be used in a project. In the original document this video is based on, two to three is considered the most one should have. At least one of those global variables would likely be a game object variable for your game manager. A game manager is a game object in the scene of your game, which could be used as a central hub for all the main pieces of data in your game. Things like the player game object, the score, the camera game object, UI elements, etc. That way, when you're working with prefabs and templates, you have a connection to the outside world, so to speak. Your game manager is the way you can program prefabs and templates for objects in your scene like using a getfsm game object to get the player game object from the game manager global variable. With a game manager, you could then host many other values which all the other systems in your game can reference using getfsm actions. Design. Never fear using several FSMs for a single feature. This is a big one. One of the most common problems I see is when beginners try to pack everything into one FSM and they create the infamous state machine spaghetti, a massive jumbled mess packed with redundancies. These FSMs, more often than not, could have been significantly simplified and cleaned up by splitting them into three smaller FSMs. For example, why force a whole character controller into one FSM, creating a jumbled mess of logic and redundant states, when you could just split that into three smaller ones, one for move, one for look, and one for jump. For more complex designs, this will increase, and that's a good thing. Divide and conquer. Keep yourself sane. Design first optimize later. So just make it work and then worry about performance. Try to think of direct and simple terms of logic. Occam's razor, the simplest explanation is often the correct one. Build your game in the way that seems painfully obvious, the way that seems just too good to be true, and then if there are any performance issues, you can begin to solve them. Then, as you gain experience, you'll know where optimization pain points can arise, and you'll design with those things in mind. Always name your events, variables, states, FSMs, and game objects. Described as succinctly as possible. You want clear descriptions that make sense at a glance. You want high-level language so that someone who isn't even working on your project can come and look at it and make some sort of sense of it. The human brain has a limited capacity for how many things it can hold in short-term memory at once. So, as you develop complex systems, you want the design of it to do some of that heavy lifting for you by being a clear picture in and of itself. So instead of naming a variable ms, you could just write move speed. And instead of hsm, you could just write high score manager. Also, succinctly doesn't just mean brief or short, it also means clear. So detail is at times necessary. For example, instead of health, maybe you write player health to differentiate it from enemy health. An extension of this idea, by the way, is to use state colors. Color coding is a great way to understand your logic at a glance. Use slashes in your names for events and variables. This helps organize them in the drop-down menus. To be very honest, like I knew this was a thing and I didn't start doing this until recently, and yeah, it's just been, uh, yeah, total game changer. Scope. 
The stereotype is the young, wide-eyed, aspiring programmer who immediately jumps into learning by saying, I'm gonna create the next great MMO. And they work on it for maybe a month, and then it never goes anywhere beyond that. Start with small and simple mechanics. Cut your project down into small chunks. Make these chunks work individually. Jean uses the admittedly weird example of what he calls uh, the modular humanoid. The modular humanoid is made out of very distinct organs, but each could be replaceable. The heart can be swapped with a mechanical pump, brain with a computer, skeleton with <laughs> carbon fiber. <laughs> Try applying this modular thought pattern to your project. Starting from scratch. Don't be afraid of scrapping everything and starting from scratch. It's a lot more productive than trying to fix something with a poor foundation. Use version control. Use GitHub or other such services to host your project. Don't rely on zips and just dumping the entire project every time you want a backup. This is costly both on resources and your time. You want something easy, accessible, and quick. Having a Git repo, for example, lets you just hit two buttons to back up only the files that have been added or changed. It's quick and can be done as often as you'd like. There's a sort of fear that can set in as your Unity project gets bigger and bigger. You might get a little anxious at the idea of changing or tweaking things, or even trying new things. Experimenting can seem very risky. So version control is kind of like working with a safety net because you can always have the peace of mind that whatever you try, you'd be able to revert back to a previous version. And another big thing is that these tools allow you to see exactly the changes you've made instead of trying to remember what you've changed. Check out our video on setting up your own GitHub repository, link in the description. So those are the best practices that you should definitely be doing on your own projects. Let us know what other practices you think are important in the comments. Be sure to check out our other videos to learn all the various features of Playmaker. Links to more learning resources are in the description.